I hope it's a, it's a process of maturation. Because if you look at the relationship between the indigenous people of this region and the European settlers <clears throat> and others that arrived later, you see this real simplistic, one-dimensional series of relationships. Um, extermination, relocation, assimilation, self-determination, um, and then and neglect. <laughs> And then in the 60s, you see this, you know, sort of romanticism and nostalgia that all of a sudden it's cool to be Native American and Marlon Brando at the Oscars and um, everybody's wearing beads and headbands and, and the identity of Native people suddenly is adopted by the mainstream. And, you know, everything's okay for a while, um, but as these outsiders try to understand our culture, all of a sudden there are these really complex <laughs> concepts like sovereignty and self-determination and community, you know, sustainability, um, sustainable development. And these are concepts that are really different from Western concepts of government and, um, and business and capitalism. And then there's this process of, you know, I like what I see on the outside, but you know, what you are on the inside, your values, um, it's just not exactly what I bargained for. And so there's this, you know, you see this, this clash of cultures over things like treaty rights, hunting and fishing, gathering rights, sovereignty, um, sustainable development, and all of a sudden it's, you know, it, it involves some give and take, and there's, it's it's not as romantic as it was in the 60s. <laughs> so the process over the last 20 years has been this sort of, well, I don't, you know, I'm trying to understand who you are and what you stand for. And and it's been a maturing process on the part of Native people to to explain traditional tribal values and how they fit in a contemporary society. And I think that, I think now, as we look at, you know, things like energy crisis and the fossil fuel degradation and overdevelopment and all those things that are making our lives challenging, all all of our lives, not just Native people, but you know, society in general. Um, I think society's looking to Native cultures and saying, you know, hmm, I think that whole concept of sustainable development and and trying to adapt humans into the landscape rather than adapting the landscape to fit the needs of humans, all of a sudden that's looking more attractive in, in long-term visionary terms. And now, all of a sudden, I think that, you know, a academia and government, Western civilization in general, is listening to what Native people have to say and what our cultures offer. And thinking that maybe, you know, there's something to these people that have lived on this landscape for tens of thousands of years and might just know something about it. I think when things really work, and, and it's not just indigenous people on this continent, but you look at indigenous cultures all over the, the planet, and you have people that have evolved with a landscape, and it's almost like a dance. You know, they, they learn to adapt themselves to the rhythms of that landscape. The seasons, the climate, the soils, the f resources, and they, they shape themselves influenced, you know, by that landscape. Their ceremonies, what they eat, and, and what they, you know, what they plant, and, and the prayers they say. And it's a, it's a rhythm that fits with that landscape problems develop when you have people that come from outside that landscape bringing their own dance and imposing that dance on that landscape. It may work where they originated, but it might not work on that landscape. The people that are successful are the people that, that recognize those rhythms and adapt themselves to it. Um, you know, it's the old when in Rome do as the Romans. Um, that's when it works, and you see societies that, that work all over the planet. 
Um, but usually they're societies that have been informed by the knowledge base of the indigenous people of that region. And the problems, the societal stress, is when you have cultures that are trying to force other rhythms on that landscape and not adapt themselves. And so, you know, I think it's, I think it's really important as we move forward and, and try to communicate the cultures and the history of the original peoples of this area that we recognize those rhythms and respect them and, and honor them in ways that make sense for that particular culture. And that means paying attention to the landscape and understanding that place is central.